Well, hello, Internet. Today I'm going to go completely through what exactly object-oriented programming is. What will be covered? Why has object-oriented programming become the standard way to program? How does object-oriented programming differ from procedural programming? What is an object? What is a class? What is inheritance? What is polymorphism? And a whole bunch more. First off, object-oriented programming makes your programs more flexible and understandable. That is why it is used. And in this presentation, I am assuming that you have at least a minor understanding of programming in general, or you might get a little bit lost. Please refer to the JavaScript tutorial that is listed above. First off, with procedural programming, a programmer sits down and asks themselves, what does this program have to do? And then it lists out all of those functions in a row. Object-oriented programming instead asks what things are in this program and what functions must those things be able to perform as well as what variables should be associated with those things. Here's an example of a procedural programming that's trying to emulate a car. All cars drive forward, so the procedural programming goes in and creates a drive forward function. Also, all, all cars stop, hopefully, and also they honk their horn. So the procedural programming goes in and creates these three functions to emulate a car. An object-oriented programmer would instead go in and define an object named car and then afterwards define those functions that object car should have. Just like the procedural programming, the ability to drive forward, stop, and honk. So what happens whenever someone comes in and says, well, I want my car to have a different honking noise than this other car? Well, if you're a procedural programmer, you would go into your honk horn function, as you can see here, and define a whole bunch of the ifs. So if car A is chosen, you would honk a certain way, else you would go in and honk differently for car B. If you were an object-oriented programmer, you would just, just simply define two new objects of the type car. What would happen is all the functions and variables you defined for your superclass car would automatically become capabilities that car A and car B could use, but in this circumstance, car A and car B are going to override the honk horn function described in the car class and honk differently. Let's say that after you change your honk function, you will now have to go in and allow for different cars to drive forward differently. For example, if it was an all-terrain vehicle, procedural programmer would go in just like before and create a whole bunch more if statements. The object-oriented programmer doesn't need to touch any of the working code just like before and just simply goes in and defines new functions that give the all-terrain capabilities to those cars that would have it. Object-oriented code is a lot neater and organized as you can see because if you want to add a new capability, you just create a new function without touching any of the old code. So what is inheritance? Well, you've actually just used inheritance. Object-oriented programming requires less code to get things done because of a concept called inheritance. In the example, you first created a basic car object. Then the objects car A and car B were able to inherit all of the capabilities that all cars have while overriding those features that differ. The car object above is what we would refer to as the superclass. So what specifically is a class? A class is just simply a blueprint that describes how to build many objects. Here is an example of a car class. You can see here I defined the class with the keyword class followed by car, then have an opening curly bracket, followed by three variables, engine, gas tank, and door, which all cars would have, and then I gave this car class five functions that also every car would have. Well, what do you do with this class? Well, you would use this class then to create additional objects. Each object will have all of the variables that you define in the superclass car. As well, it would have all the functions that you defined in the superclass car. And in the circumstance in which a function that's defined in the class car would not work for your specific object, you would, could just simply go in, just like we did before, and override all those functions. So how do you create an object specifically? Most programming languages create objects in much the same way as I have described here. They first list out the name of the class, followed by the name of the object you want to create, followed by the equal sign, the keyword new, then the class name, followed by two brackets and a semicolon. Or, a more specific example, let's say we wanted to create an object named Dodge of type car class. You would just simply follow the example I have here on the screen. 
So how do you access those variables or methods within your class? You would just simply use the dot operator. So how do you access those variables and functions within your object? Well, you would use the dot operator. As you can see here in this example, I'm able to access the variable engine by putting the dot operator between the word engine and the class name Dodge. And then I also am able to access the function get gas of object type Dodge by putting the same dot operator in there. What you have to understand is it's good practice to not allow somebody to directly be able to access your variable values, in this case, engine, gas tank, and door. So object-oriented programming believes that you should actually create functions that would allow you, in this specific example, to access the gas tank. You would use the function get gas tank anytime you would want to be able to access and receive the actual value stored in variable gas tank with this function. As you can see here on the right side of the screen, I've created a new object called Dodge, just as I showed you on the previous slide. I'm then able to use object Dodge, followed by the dot operator and the function get gas tank to access the value within the variable gas tank and then assign it to the word fuel in tank as we got. This is what we refer to as encapsulation. With encapsulation, you create two methods for each variable that you define. One of those methods returns the value, and this function is normally started off with the word get. The other changes the value of that variable, and that uh, function is normally begun with the word set. What you have to understand is encapsulation may not be enforceable in your chosen object-oriented programming language, but I'm not going to get into the difference between public and private in this presentation. I may cover that in a future presentation. Well, that's basically all I'm able to fit into the presentation here. I uh, look forward to part two of the object-oriented programming presentation. And if you have any questions, leave them below. Thank you.